Good Thursday morning. This is Frank Rock. This is the House of Orange Sports Channel coming at you. The Tennessee Volunteers football team gets some good news uh, earlier this morning as local offensive lineman Nick Moore from Jefferson County High School is in the fold. He makes commitment number 12 for Josh Heifel and his staff. And they talked about how Glenn Ellerby really did a great job recruiting him as well. As Moore, as you know, if some of you are not familiar last week, he was ready to commit earlier in the week. And uh, if he would have committed at that point, it would have been to West Virginia. He chose to put it off. He moved up his visit a week, came to Tennessee this past weekend. And Nick Moore said he was torn. He was torn between the two, Tennessee and West Virginia. He said he couldn't have gone wrong either way. But in the end, he chose to stay home. He's going to play on the offensive line. West Virginia was recruiting him as a defensive lineman. And uh, some of the comments were pretty interesting talking about him. So his former coach, or not his former coach, his current coach, Spencer Riley, of course, played for the Vols back in that mid to late 90s, 96 to 99. It said he started 44 straight games. I mean, he he played a very vital part of that national championship, you know, up to that national championship team and stuff. But Riley's his current coach at Jefferson County High School. Of course, that is where Riley played as well. And they talked about more and he's been told by Tennessee staff he will play center at Tennessee and look to me like in the picture that he's a left-handed center so his build just the way they talked about him kind of reminds me of James Stone who played for Tennessee under Derek Dooley who come in and was a solid offensive lineman for Tennessee during his whole time they're left-handed center they said based on his build he's around 6'2", around 300 pounds. He's already has the physicality. And I was reading some articles on him as well. Talked about he committed, he uh, participated in a camp down in Carrollton, Georgia, and his stock really rised in that. And how now he's he's primarily played tackle for Jefferson County, but he projects interior offensive lineman for Tennessee. And like I said, he, they're projecting him as a center in here. As well. So when can he, you know, come into the equation? How ready will he be? Cooper Mays graduates this year. So where does Tennessee go? I think they're going to have uh, guys ready to go next year on that. They'll have, but you know, the offensive line, you don't know until it comes who's ready, who's physically ready, who's grasping the offense. They talked about Nick Moore and his characteristics, very smart. He's able to be kind of the quarterback that line. He's able to guide guys, he's able to lead them. So it's a, uh, you know, that's a positive for me seeing that. So now that gives Tennessee their 12th commitment. It's their second from an offensive lineman as they got Ugamura in the fold. Um, so that's two interior offensive linemen. Now you just got to wait out David Sanders. David Sanders in this past weekend. From everything I read right now, I think Tennessee's in the league for him right now. It is fluid. I had somebody criticize me on because I did a recruiting video over the weekend, and I'm open to constructive feedback. I'm not on here whining or anything. Please don't say I am. If you followed recruiting, I followed recruiting for a long, long time, even more so now than ever. Recruiting is fluid. It is changing all the time. How many guys have we seen over the last month who have come to Tennessee on a visit, unofficial or officially, They've left Tennessee. Tennessee's my leader. The next week they go visit somewhere else. All of a sudden that team is the leader. That's why I say I think. I don't know. I don't know anything on recruiting. Let me rephrase that so you don't take. I'm not going to know for sure on recruiting until guys sign on the dotted line. That's just the way recruiting is. It is fluid. If guys are still taking visits, it's nothing certain. Nothing certain. We can sit here and say, yeah, Tennessee leads for player A. I think they lead for player B. It's not because I'm not. It's not I'm just throwing crap against the wall to see what sticks. It's based on what we're reading out here. Right now, I think Tennessee leads for David Sanders. Do I know that for sure? I don't know it for sure. But I think there's a pretty good indication that Tennessee's in a good spot for him. Does that mean they're going to get him? No. Do I think they'll get him? I think they have a good shot at it. I think they have a really shot, but he's got his visit to Ohio State coming this weekend. And it's going to be important that Tennessee weathers the storm on that one. Tennessee come out of Josh Petty's visit in good shape with him, but he's taking a visit to Florida State. Haven't really heard much 
from there. But Florida State was, according to Josh Petty, his leader prior to coming to Knoxville. So I think Tennessee had some work to do. I think they did well on that visit. But, you know, I've seen where Petty's sister is also going to Florida State. So that's got to play in Florida State's hands as well. And, you know, Florida State's done a good job recruiting. One Gaston was in Knoxville this past weekend. I've read that Tennessee is the biggest threat to get him from Georgia. But you can't count Georgia out on that one. Jacob Ward from Savannah, Georgia. Seemed like Tennessee did well with him this past weekend, but he's visiting LSU this week. I'd read before that Auburn felt pretty good with him. So this offensive line board is going to be fluid. You know you've got Nick Moore in the fold. You know you've got Agamora in the fold. Both of those are interior linemen. They project as a guard, or I'm sorry, as a center and guard respectively. David Sanders is the next big one. I think his timetable He's not set a commitment date, but from everything I've read, sometime July, August seems to be his timetable. Again, I think, I think, I don't know it because he has not said when he's committed on it. Um, And then they'll go from there. It's a big visit weekend for Tennessee this coming weekend. Don't have all the visitors for sure at this point. I think we'll know more about that more today. And of course, guys could drop out for the weekend. They could add guys last minute with it as well. But this offensive line class, Tennessee did very well last year with their offensive line class. Of course, they added um, Hurd from LSU, who still has multiple years of eligibility left, that he'll be a big part of that offensive line this year. Uh, And with you losing Cooper Mays, you lose Spragans, you're going to lose Campbell, you're going to lose Jackson Lampley, Dane Davis. I mean, that's five guys that are contributors on that offensive line that will be gone after this season. So this offensive line, you have to continue to, of course, add through the high school ranks, but they're going to have to add through the portal next year as well. It's just the nature of it. And, you know, it's going to be a very vital year for for progression on how Coach Ellerby is able to develop these guys, to get them ready, not only, you know, in case of emergency this year, but getting them ready for next year when they lose so many guys uh, to graduation. But I'm going to wrap up on that one. I am going to record uh, Tennessee, Florida State the next day. We know Tennessee plays Texas A&M in the championship series this weekend. It's it's a whole new level. Tennessee won the ACC Invitational this past week. They move up to big boy baseball against Texas A&M. It'll be a tough matchup. Tennessee has played them and beaten them. That was an SEC tournament. That was in a different setting. So, uh, you know, both teams, Texas a and is the only team in the field who has not lost a game this postseason. So it's a it's a tall task for Tennessee for sure, but one I think they can uh handle. So I will I'll do a next day here in a few minutes later today and we'll go and do a preview of Tennessee, Texas AM for this weekend as well. Make sure you hit the like button, you subscribe, you share. If you want to say thanks, there's that super thanks at the bottom. If you got constructive feedback, I, I'm totally I'm open to it. But keep this in mind when it comes to recruiting specifically football recruiting, when guys are right in the middle of visits. Used to, we didn't see guys take visits until the fall. Now, with these new calendars, and I'm curious to see if they move up some early signing days to summer. I've seen proponents of doing it in July. But guys are taking official visits in the middle of summer now. Used to, it was just kind of unofficial, and then all the visits took place in the fall. It's a different game now, man. And when a guy visits Tennessee, and they still have two more visits to go, Nothing's nothing sure. It, it is unsure at that point. And um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, yeah, Tennessee leads for David Sanders. They're going to get David Sanders when he still has an Ohio State visit. And there's people think Ohio State's a big threat on that. Um, so I, I'm not going to mislead you. I'm going to tell you what I think. If I'm unsure of something, I'm going to tell you. doesn't mean I'm not doing my research or anything. It's because there's no certainty on that. I do have to address that. I have to defend a little bit of why I'm saying I'm not for sure on something it's because I'm not. Nothing is for sure in recruiting until guys sign. It just isn't. We've seen it too many times. Guys come up, take a last minute visit somewhere, and then they'll flip. It happens every single year. Every year it'll happen again this year around the country. Frank Rock, Castle Barn Sports Channel. I hope you have a great Thursday. And last but most certainly not least, go Vols. <laughs>